Uh-oh. I wanted to show you all this. What? Oh, that's taking a long time to suck up. That is not gasoline mix. <laughs> so what is that? That is bar oil. They filled their fuel tank up with bar oil. Now, what's in the bar oil tank? Let's look. Absolutely nothing. First easy job of the day, changing an old edger blade out on this cobalt edger. All right, so on the bench I have a Husqvarna 455 Rancher, really good saw, but this customer won't start, been sitting two years. So of course, first thing I do is check the fuel because a lot of times it's the same fuel that's been ugh, sitting in there for two years. And, we don't want to go there. Now we do have a primer bulb here, so that's a good thing, but uh -oh. I wanted to show you all this. What? Oh, that's taking a long time to suck up. That is not gasoline mix. <laughs> so what is that? That is bar oil. They filled their fuel tank up with bar oil. Now, what's in the bar oil tank? Let's look. Absolutely nothing. So, there might have been a little gas left in this because it's slightly runny, but no, the majority of it is straight bar oil. So, a lot of times people don't know what to do whenever they actually make this mistake and it's really not that big of a deal especially if you've got a primer bulb now this primer bulb is full of bar oil right now so we know it has gone through the fuel filter through the fuel line through the carburetor and into the primer bulb what we're going to do we're going to dump this we're going to throw some gas in there we're going to rinse it out and then we're just going to prime the stink out of it until we get it all cleaned out Try to prime it. Primer bulb stuck in. I'm gonna have to throw some gas in there. All right, so I pour some fuel in there, and I'm just going to keep priming until we get more gas than bar oil through here. And it's getting much easier now. I'm probably gonna dump this out and flush it one more time with some fresh fuel. And put on some bar oil in there. Let's go ahead and check his plug. Yeah, that definitely could go for a new one. Now let's see if been sitting two years won't start. We'll start with actually fresh fuel in it instead of bar oil.
on the bench, I have a PB250L in, which these were great blowers, but after 10 years, I mean, this is a 2012 model. The customer says that it won't start after you kill it. If it cools down, it does restart. But I can't get any fire out of this thing at all, so it was obviously on its way out. It is going to need a coil, which is $61, and on a 10-year-old blower, that is a little steep. But Echo has a lifetime warranty on their coil. Now, after the first five years, I mean, the first five years, they'll pay for the labor and the coil. But after five years, you have to pay for the labor, but not the coil. So called the customer. I charge $60 to tear this entire thing apart and put it back together. Um, and he was happy with that. So I'm going to do that. And not going to make a video on it because I already have. But if you'd like to know how to do it, I'm going to leave a link right up above so you can see how it's done. On the bench, I have a customer's uh, Husqvarna 150BT, and he says, gets hot, dies, then when he adds fuel, it restarts. Now, a lot of people get confused on this, thinking that that has something to do with it, but a lot of times, it's because you let it cool off for a second. So, uh, the, when the coil is going out, it will go out when the unit gets hot, and then after it cools down, it will start again. So, when looking up a new coil for a 150BT Husqvarna, guess how much that bad boy is? $133.99. Now that is a little steep on a unit, especially when it's five to 10 years old. Customers will not do that. They are not going to put that kind of money in it with labor. And that means they don't get a blower. I don't make any money. So what do I do? I keep old burned up units laying around. Now this thing was almost brand new when the customer burned it up and they decided they didn't want it anymore and gave it to me. And guess what that is for me? It is a super score because guess how much money I can make off this thing in pots. First, let me show you what the inside look like. As you can see here, I got my HD endoscope out. If you want to get one of these bad boys, I will leave a link to um, one in the description box below. They are awesome, but this thing is totally scored up. Let me show you the outside. Ooh, toasty. So I know you're asking, why didn't I just fix this blower? Since it was pretty much brand new anyways, all I would have had to do was put a new piston and cylinder on it. And I could have probably sold it for a couple hundred bucks when, yeah, I think brand new, they're about 329 or something like that. So I wouldn't want to, you know, push more than that on trying to sell it. And I've made a past video where I did that exact thing, put a brand new piston and cylinder on a brand new burned up unit. And I sold it for a couple hundred bucks to one of my viewers. So, I mean, it does happen. I will do that. But what I find out is I let it sit around the shop until I think I'm gonna get around to it. And then a customer brings a unit in and they need a particular part for their Husqvarna BT-150. And a lot of times they're not going to pay for the parts because they're super expensive on these blowers. But if I have them in stock, pretty much brand new, I'll sell them at half price. And that's pure profit on my end. Plus I make the labor. So instead of, Fixing a blower that um, the piston cylinder is going to be about $90 less, so I might pay, you know, 70 bucks or $65 in parts. I might make $150, you know, in the end of it. I can make a lot more money selling all these parts individually at even half price if I'm making labor off fixing 10 different units instead of just one and selling it. So it works out for me and it really works out for the customers because a lot of times they're not even going to fix their units if they have to put one of these expensive parts on it, especially if it's like five years old. They'll just go buy a new one. So one man's trash is another woman's treasure. When I get units in like this that somebody burned up that's almost brand new, I always hold on to them because they are worth a ton of money in parts to me. Um, I strip it down bare bone, but I will take the engine off later so I can recycle that. The plastic, unfortunately, will have to go in the trash can. I take the straps. People are always wearing their straps out and need a new set. A set of straps for a left and a right are a little over 50 bucks, so I can definitely make $25 off the pair. 
the rewinds, they're a big hot item. I mean, that's a perfectly good rewind, almost brand new. A new rewind's $40.99, so I can definitely get 20 bucks out of it. Even if somebody brings just a rewind in by itself and it like needs a spring or something, the spring's probably, you know, what's that, $17.99? Um, no, nobody's, gonna, nobody wants to pay that much for a spring. So I'll just sell the whole rewind and, you know, labor and all. They don't even have to worry about it for 20 bucks. Why not? Air filter covers are something people lose a lot. Even these knobs right here. New cover goes for $22. Ooh, that's steep. I'll sell it for 10. I mean, even the air filter is actually still in pretty good shape. The whole throttle cable assembly, I have already stolen the throttle trigger assembly, so that went on another unit, and I'm going to show you how much all these parts are and how much I make off of them. I mean, wow, that throttle lever assembly with the cable is $75. Yeah, I can definitely make 30 35 bucks off that. But I still have the carburetor. Those go for a pretty penny. Just under $150. Dang! The mufflers, I will probably not sell those that often. I mean, they just, they don't go bad that often. But this air filter base, not the base itself, but the choke lever on it, sometimes those break. And just that alone lists for 32 bucks. Expensive! So on the customer's blower, it ended up having no fire when it got hot, for sure. So it definitely needed the coil. I went ahead and stole the coil off of this one and put it on here. I also went ahead and changed his fuel lines out because they were a little scary. And this thing runs great now. So I get a ton of these Husqvarna 150 BTs in the shop. Everybody bought one from Lowe's and they all eventually need parts. So I got them and they're half price. I do have to admit something, though, because I usually just throw the frames away. I, I don't usually ever need them, but I might definitely keep this one around. I mean, the frame itself lists for $121.99. I don't know if I'll ever need that. The cover for the fan is $146, and the fan itself is $67. So I'm just going to hold on to this whole thing. Maybe I'll sell the parts. Even the gas tanks, 94 bucks, which I'll sell these gas tanks all day long for people that just want them for miscellaneous projects for about 20 bucks. So that's it, guys. I can make a ton of money off one burned up blower. Hopefully this video saved you some time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me on Instagram at The Real Chicanic or find me at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Wait until you see how expensive those are doing toby he likes this blower for some reason mufflers i do not sell that often but hey who who knows sometimes these <laughs> toby you're making it super difficult dude no you can't sit right there